Hi, my name is Carla Alexander, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use my ruler, Curves for Squares. So what exactly is Curves for Squares, and why might you want to use it? Well, it's a super cool tool that's really more like a template than it is a ruler. It's a tool that helps you cut half-square triangles with a curve. I know curves can be freeform cut, but you'll find the results often vary. In this video, you'll see that when you use the ruler, your blocks will turn out consistently every time. Plus, you have six different sizes to choose from. Okay, before we begin, let's take a quick look at what makes a successful half-square triangle block. First, the fabric selection. You can see that one side of my block is light and the other is dark. It's really important to choose a light-dark or contrasting combination. Otherwise, the colors blend together and look like one square of fabric, as you see here. When I choose fabric for my quilts, I like to begin by deciding on a theme or a family of fabrics, such as batiks, solids, brights, or for my quilt Savannah, I chose a jungle theme. I really love using a large combination of different fabrics, so to make sure my selections work well, I preview my choices by laying them out like this. I use this method to make sure my choices look good once they're all together. I can check my lights and make sure they blend together well as a group. Then I'll do the same thing with my darks. Next, I can decide if I like how they all look together, similar to how they'd be when stitched into a quilt. This makes it a lot of fun and super easy to make a scrappy quilt if you have a fabric stash. You can just choose a theme and simply cut your squares all to the same size. Keep in mind, each square is equivalent to one completed block. So if you want a quilt with 60 blocks, you'll need 30 light squares and 30 dark squares. It doesn't matter if you only have one square of a particular print, you can still use it so long as you can cut it to the correct size and as long as it fits in with your theme. Okay, a couple of things before we begin cutting. Let's look at why the ruler works. First, the seam for this block needs to begin and end in each corner with a 45 degree angle with the curve centered nicely in between. The 45 degree angle is really important and when it's cut it needs to be at least 5 eighths of an inch long in order to accommodate the diagonal and outer edge seam allowances. I know this might sound boring but if the angle isn't long enough your block will end up looking something like this with the seam running off the edge of the block rather than through the corners. Even though the cut began and ended in the corners, the 45 degree angle wasn't long enough to accommodate the seam allowance. However, when you use the ruler, this is what your block will look like, and you can count on your seam being centered exactly in each corner. Okay, now let's check out the ruler with all the different sizes. You'll be able to see how the 45 degree angle is built into every corner on each of the different squares. So here's the ruler, and I have a 5 inch square, so I'll position the square under the ruler like this. I'll match the 5 inch square size with the number 5 on the ruler. Next I'll find the placement line underneath the number and trace it to the outer edge of the ruler. And this is the exact point where you'll place the corner of the square. Position the other corner in the exact same way. You'll see that the placement lines rest exactly along each edge of the square. You can also see how the 45 degree angle is built right into the edge of the corner. Now my square is ready to be cut. Let's look at some other sizes. Here's a 7 inch square. and I'm going to position it the same exact way as I did the 5 inch square, only I'll choose a 7 inch placement lines and number. Once again, I simply follow the placement lines from the number to the edge of the ruler, and that's where the corner of my square will be. Let's take a look at an 8 inch square. This moves to the upper portion of the ruler, but it's positioned in the exact same way. If 
for a 9 inch square, you'll notice that one of the placement lines is shared with a 10 inch square. And I've drawn the line here so you can actually see the 45 degree a little bit better. I find the 9 inch number, trace it to the edge, that's where the corner goes, goes and same thing on this side. So while these sizes are for whole numbers, the ruler also works with half sizes with just a little bit of wiggling. For example, here's a 9.5 inch square. Simply center the square under the 9 inch number. Like this. You'll just want to make sure that the corners rest right on the edge of the ruler. For an 8.5 inch square, you'd center it on the 8 inch number and so on. Okay, so there you have it. A really cool ruler that looks somewhat like a mountain range, but helps you create blocks with awesome curved seams that always center in the corner. So before actually cutting your squares, I think it's a good idea to take a practice run on your cutting mat without any fabric at all. So expose the blade and place your pointer finger right on top of the rotary cutter, right along these little edges. And then make a practice run on the cutting mat, similar to drawing a curve with your pointer finger. Make a long curve and then try a short one. And practice several times until you're comfortable. And as you cut, you'll see how your hand tilts and leans side to side as you cut. And you'll be using the same technique when you're using the ruler. So now it's time to get my squares ready to be cut. Here I have two 10 inch squares, a light one and a dark one. And I've layered them into a fabric deck with both squares right side up. So it doesn't matter if the light or dark squares on the top, just that they're both right side up and that the edges are as nice and even as you can possibly get them. Okay, this stack is ready to be cut. So I'll begin by placing the ruler over the top of the squares. I'm going to match the number on the ruler to correspond with the size of the squares. I'm using 10 inch squares, so I'll use the 10 inch placement lines. Find the line underneath the number and trace it to the outside edge of the ruler. Then place the end of the line in the corner of the square. Swing the bottom of the ruler to match up with the corner as well. And then make sure that both placement lines are nice and even along each edge. And make sure that the edge of the ruler rests exactly in each one of the corners. Some numbers, like the 9 and 10, share the same line. However, when you look at the lower portion of the 9, you'll see it has its own placement line a little bit higher, so it can cut a smaller square. Okay, so now we're ready to cut. So now my squares are ready to be cut, and I have the ruler on the top. And I'm going to place one hand over the top of the ruler with my fingers pressed down and close to the curved edge in the area where I'm going to cut. I'm going to expose the blade and put my pointer finger right on top, right on these little edges. I'm going to gently pull it across the board until it bumps up against the ruler. And I'm going to cut about two inches, leaning and tilting my hand as I go, and stop and climb my fingers up another couple of inches and then cut and climb my fingers and continue until I get to the end of the squares. So once, this, once the squares are cut in half, I'm going to lift the ruler off and shuffle one side to the bottom of the stack. And what this does is it creates two different squares. You'll see the block on the right, on the dark side, has kind of a hill, and the light has kind of a valley. And on the one underneath, it's just the opposite. So you want to make sure and keep these halves in order, and so a right side to a left side, 
and not get them mixed up. And once you have the hang of it, you can cut four squares at a time if you want. Just make sure your blade is nice and sharp. And keep in mind that when you're using the ruler, all the cuts are identical. So you can cut as many as you like and then mix and match them in the end. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I prepare my sewing machine for sewing curves. I lift the presser foot up and I get a little ruler and I place it right under the edge and I'm going to line that quarter inch edge right up with my needle and I'm going to bring it down right until I'm on the quarter inch line and then I'm going to look on my sewing machine, the bed of the sewing machine and adjust it so I can find a straight line and make sure that it's aligned straight and that it's not crooked. I'm going to take just a plain old piece of blue painter tape and I'm going to place it right along the edge of the ruler and then I'm going to take a piece of double sticky mounting tape that you can buy at any craft store and I'm going to put it right here along the edge. So the blue tape is so uh, you can avoid any adhesive residue getting stuck on the bed of your sewing machine but the uh, mounting tape is going to help direct your curve into the needle as you sew. So now I'm going to sew the two halves together and to begin with I'm going to place the two points together and place them under my presser foot. If you have a needle down uh, option on your sewing machine it's a good thing to use it. That way when you move the fabric each time you stop um, it won't shift. I'm going to take the top layer and I'm going to pleat it up in my hand like this and then I can use my pointer finger to position the fabric as I sew. I'm going to take my bottom hand and I'm going to be swinging and bending the fabric as well. If you have a stiletto or a little nippers like it, like this, it's really helpful also to help you uh, position the fabric. So let's begin. I'm keeping the fabric straight for the last half inch before I get to the needle. Swing it away and back again. And when I get a couple of inches down on the block, I'm going to stop and I'm going to pick up my two ends and I'm going to uh, match them together and walk back along the curve about two or three inches and then I'm going to use what I call a placement pin and I'm going to place it perpendicular to the curved edge. And What this is going to do is it's going to help me determine how much fabric needs to ease together before I get to the bottom of the block. So I'm going to swing it away, swing the curves away from the tape, straighten them out, and so match them up again, swing them back into position, and I can feel with my hands I'm getting close to the placement pin, and so I'm going to stop and check it out, and I'm going to take the bottom layer and pull it towards the tape, and just lay the top piece so the edges are nice and even and continue sewing and I can see right here that it's nice and flush and the edges are nice to, nice and even together and that there aren't any pleats. Okay, I'm almost to the placement pin so I'm going to stop and take it out and once again I'm going to pivot that top piece and match it with the bottom edge I'm just swing little bits at a time here. Get the nice the edges nice and even. And when I get right close to the bottom, I can check and make sure that my points are going to match. And I'm going to put them together and put my little nippers right on top of it. And I'm going to follow them through to the end. I'm not going to stretch, just hold them in place. And when I get to the end, I'm going to uh, cut the thread. Okay, so now let's take a look at our curve. And there you go. Okay, so here's a block that I just sewed, and now it's time to press. What I like to do is I like to take a towel and put it on top of my ironing board. This helps the curve hold its shape. And then I take the iron and I steam my ironing board and that's going to help the curve relax when I press it. I take my block and I put the dark side up and I run my finger right along the seam 
and I just kind of flop the block open like this and let it relax. Then I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to press up to the seam allowance and never diagonally. I'm going to tap each corner, move across sideways. Then I'm going to take the block and flip it upside down, check the seam allowances, tap each corner, and flip it back right side up. And that's about all the pressing that this block will need. I find that if I'm really careful when sewing and pressing my curves, the blocks don't really need to be squared up. However, there are always those times when it is necessary. So I have two suggestions for squaring up your blocks. First, you can use a squared up ruler designed by Penny Heron. And you can see her demonstration video by visiting the Creative Grids Ruler website. Or you can watch this demonstration using a simple square ruler. Okay, to begin with, I place my ruler over the top of my block to help determine an approximate size. With this block, it looks like I can square it up to approximately 9.5 by 9.5. Next, I like to mark my ruler with sticky notes like this. Next I position a sticky note in each corner to define the size. I like to take a smaller square and cut it in half diagonally and place it in the corner where the curve is. Now I can check and make sure that the quarter inch seam allowance is never cut off. I'm going to take my hand, place it on top of the ruler, pull it across, trim off just a little bit of fabric, and come to the top and do the same thing. Then I'm going to open the ruler like a door. I'm going to turn the block two times and put the cleaned corner right down here on the left hand side. I can see my diagonal edges or corners and now it's time to trim the rest of the block. And you can see I didn't have to trim a lot for my block to be a nine and a half inch square.